You know, back before modern technology, scientists used to make their own equipment, including mass balances. But a mass balance is not something that's really that complicated. They're made up of a few parts. They have a weighing pan on which we weigh the sample. They have a beam. They have some standard weights that slide across the beam. And then there's a thing called a fulcrum on which the beam balances. And then last, there's a pointer on which we can make the measurement. You know, weighing samples in chemistry is important. We obtain chemicals all the time as chemists, and we need to know how much of the substance we have, so we take the mass. You're going to be doing a year-long science project, and you are going to need a mass balance. You can't afford a thousand dollar mass balance. I know I can't. The school buys ours for us. And so what you're going to do is you're going to make your own at home. And you'll be surprised at how accurate they can be. And so, you may be thinking, well, this looks pretty complicated. It doesn't have to be. In fact, I'm going to show you how you can make a mass balance with common items that you can find at your own home. Alright, so you're going to need some textbooks, a bunch of them, or some big heavy books. You're going to need a roller stick or a meter stick. You need some kind of long skinny rod or pole. You'll need some scissors, a pen. You'll need some string, styrofoam cups, tape, and a bag of old change. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your styrofoam cups, you're going to poke some holes in them. And once you poke some holes in them, what you're going to be doing with these is you're going to be making your little weigh boats. Now, what you gotta do is you gotta take your string and you gotta get it the right length. You gotta first tie a knot in one of your styrofoam cups. And then you're gonna take the string and you're gonna stretch it out at a certain length as to make sure that you have enough to cut um, another string for the other cup. Then you're going to tie another knot in the other cup. Now you're gonna make sure your strings are about the same length for both of your cups. So now, once you have your string the same length for both cups, you're going to tie the knots off at the end of both cups, making sure that they're about the same size, and there you have both of your weigh boats with your strings attached. Alright, so what you're doing here is you're using that pole to position your fulcrum. Your pole is your fulcrum. So you're going to use the textbooks to kind of weigh it down and hold it in place on the table. Then you're going to take your ruler or meter stick, and you're going to tape the weigh boats onto the ends. You want to tape the weigh boats um, to the ends, you know, about the same distance from each end. And so you'll see me here tape the weigh boat about an inch off the end here. And so if I tape the weigh boat an inch off the end of my meter stick or ruler here, I'm going to want to do the same thing off the other end of my meter stick for my other So I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other end of my meter stick and I'm going to tape it about an inch off of this end. Now that I've got my um, weigh boats attached to my meter stick, I'm going to position my meter stick with weigh boats on the pole, which is my fulcrum, to try to balance it out perfectly. It takes a little bit of practice, and so once I've finally got it positioned perfectly, as you'll see me get right here, and perfect is relative, you know, the longer your ruler or meter, meter stick, the more difficult it's going to be, because the more accurate it's going to be. This is as good as I'm going to be able to get. I'm going to get a pen, and I'm going to mark right on my meter stick, or my ruler, where that position is just in case I lose it because it's very easy to have it slip off at this point in your project design. Once you've got that done you want to move your setup to a, the top of the table with more textbooks so you can elevate it just like you see. The reason we elevate it is so that if it slips the cup just kind of sits on the, the, uh, the bench just like you see and your ruler or meter stick doesn't slide off the fulcrum. You see me put a piece of tape right under the uh, the fulcrum center point there so it doesn't slip. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to test out our mass balance to see how well it works. This is a glass stopper we're going to try to find the mass of. So I'm going to put it in the weigh boat that is um, about touching the bench and now I'm going to use my change. 
Change has standard weight. You can go to the US Mint website, which I'm going to give you a chart for, and we can find the exact mass of each type of coin. So I'm going to put some quarters in here. I put two quarters in there. We see it doesn't really pick up the glass weigh boat at all. So I'm going to take two more quarters. It looks like we're getting close. So if I take another quarter, Oh, I went too far. So what I want to do now is I want to take out that quarter without just uh, having my fulcrum get slipped off, so I have to be careful. So I've taken out my quarter. So we're at four quarters right now. And so I'm going to take a nickel. A nickel's a little less than a quarter. Oh, still went too far. So i got to get that nickel out. Nickel's positioned a little strange, so I'm going to get a set of forceps over here and see if we can pull it out with a set of forceps. I don't want to pull my meter stick off the fulcrum and ruin everything. So I'm going to try to fish this thing out of here, at least get it in a position where I can then pull it out. I'm having a little difficulty here. You can see there is a reason why we have the modern technology that we have. It is easier to use. If I can get that thing lifted up on the edge, I can pull it out a little easier. There we go. Oh, I think I'm just gonna reach in now and pull it out. Hopefully I don't mess it up. All right, success. We've got our nickel out, so we still have four quarters in there. Now let's go for a really light. Let's go for the lightest one we have, it's a dime. And it's bouncing up and down a little bit, so we are really close there. So since that's the lightest piece of currency we have, we have to stop there. So. We know it weighs somewhere between four quarters and four quarters in a dime. And so we can go back to our uh, chart for the currency and figure it out from there. Now, just so we know how we can compare our mass balance to the real thing, it looks like the glass stopper weighs 24.02 grams. All right, so we can see that the four quarters weighing 22.68 grams was just barely enough to tip the scale with the glass stopper in it. So by adding the one dime, which was 2.268 grams, we went over. So adding those two together, 24.95 grams was a little bit over the weight of the glass stopper. So we know that the glass stopper was between 24.95 grams, which is a little bit over, and the 20 uh, 2.68 grams, which was just the weight of the four quarters. So we can accurately say that the weight was between 22.68 grams and 24.95 grams. So if we average those two together, we get a weight of 23.82 grams, which is pretty darn good for a homemade mass balance when we know the actual weight was 24.02 grams. Not so bad. So there you have it. You can make your own fully functional mass balance at home, just like the old scientists used to do. It predicted the mass of that glass stopper within a fairly decent margin of error. And that's all I really need you to be able to do. We need to be able to do fairly accurate and precise measurements with mass at home throughout the rest of the semester and for your science project. So, you're welcome to deviate from the design a little bit as long as it's functional. There are tons of instructables and DIYs online on how to make your own mass balance. You're welcome to go all out and make yours fairly sophisticated and even more accurate and precise. Uh, you're welcome to just keep it simple. Just make sure it's functional, it does what you need it to do, and it, uh, it, you have fun doing it, okay? So, uh, please collaborate, ask for help if you need it, Ask for my guidance and inspire other classmates with your design.